Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget. Hello. And here we are, and it's Sounding the Shadows number 147. <laughs> I can't think of any particular significance for 147. Well, Can there you? are going to be, um, I don't know how many people, but possibly hundreds of people listening to this who will yeah. know precisely what the significance of 147 <laughs> is. All the it, ones except me, you mean? It all depends on whether you watch Snooker or not. If you do a full clearance okay. on um, on the snooker table, you score one four seven, and you usually win something wonderful oh, well, for doing that. It's a miracle. Well, there we are. It? At last, something means something. <laughs> yes. See that God? Something means something. <laughs> and we did it. No, we didn't. You did it. You invented snooker. Right. Okay. So um, this week we've been because of something local. We've been thinking about a particular pattern that happens in the world and it happens with the phoenix which is the mythical creature that's supposed to rise out of the flames it happens with um butterflies and what are the things they come out of chrysalises cocoons yeah people sometimes um yeah. barbecues <laughs> someone said to me today i like the the burnt bits of sausages when they in barbecue but what this is this is a very interesting example of how fire can produce something amazing and yeah. it's um it's near us isn't it it is near us um and it's something we had no idea about until we moved here and there's this little village isn't there now, i'm probably going to pronounce it wrong i think it's Bransbeth. i think in our in our southern way we called it Bransbeth for a while but uh, i think it's Bransbeth. and it's only uh, about a mile and a half yeah. down the road isn't it, it is from our new house it is yeah. and and it's got a very solid uh, large castle and uh, it's got this ancient church hasn't it the Church of St. Brandon. So it's actually called St. Brandon at Bransbeth. Oh, okay. Just okay. so you know. Okay. So a beautiful churchyard, lovely walk for the dog. Um, and uh, just just a, a beautiful little area, isn't it? Mm. Well, the thing is, we've only learnt this recently, but in the early hours of Wednesday the 16th, 1998, this ancient church, it's hundreds of years old, was absolutely gutted by fire. Yeah, and when you say gutted, I mean it really was, wasn't it? I mean it, yeah. it, it tore all you know, the, the wood, all I the think, wood, I think and, all and the wood the in plaster, the church, yeah, yeah. And, and just absolutely devastated. Mysteriously, the the carpet survived for some strange reason. And, and one why. little children's table with little plastic That's chairs. Right, yes. Very odd. I don't know the significance in that. So nobody quite knows how it happened. Apparently. Uh, they thought it might be arson yeah. but that was never proven and there was hardly anything I gather in the news we've got a friend who knows all about this yeah. there was hardly anything in the news about it but a comment by this same friend I think expert uh, states this no this was somebody oh was that somebody else oh this, right yeah, okay that the catastrophe was arguably the greatest loss mm. suffered by the art historical heritage of the North East in the 20th century right. now that's a grand statement for a little church it must have been must have been amazing yeah. but we didn't know anything about that and having moved to where we live and just exploring in the area we we just drove down to Bransbeth because we knew there was a castle there with a cafe in it and we are drawn to, <laughs> drawn to cafes. Yeah, nothing to do with the ancient anythings, but there was a so cafe. So we go, we, then we go about 100 yards down the tra the path or the road and you're able which to go goes to the chair. church, yeah. And we thought, oh, we'll just have a look through into the church. We were really pleased it was open, weren't we? But when we went through the doors of St. Branston for the first time, I think it's true to say that we were absolutely stunned into silence. Yeah. I mean, we weren't around for this, but we'll, we'll tell you a bit more about this in a moment. But seven years of hard work they put into this, mm. and they'd managed to achieve something that really felt like some kind of miracle of restoration and refurbishment but much more than that really yeah so light and so stunning there is the most amazing window uh just glorious with flowers and um the flowers were from the flowers of paradise, paradise and apparently yeah. st brandon 
who I'd never heard of before, was a <laughs> great traveller. And when he was travelling, uh, I can't remember where it was, in the Tahiti sort of area, he loved these flowers. Mm. So they're, they're kind of mm. tribute to him. But also, they're flowers of paradise, which fits very well. They are. But there's a huge, huge east window. Yeah. And the light that flows through this church and the effect of the 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 modern uh, change and the ancient skeleton of the church is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And, and maybe added to it the fact that it came out of something that must have been absolutely devastating at the time. I'm sure it was, uh, the people must have stood in misery. And yes. thought this is that's that this is gone and finished. Well, there are pictures you can see online, aren't there, of it yeah, just the, charred the church, ruin? Yeah. Really, I don't think that they could ever have guessed, as they stood and looked at that tragedy, what what a flowering would happen, because it's so unusual. I can't even put it into words. Really, mm. Um, mm. it's as though the old church has said, I'm going to grow in a different way. <laughs> oh, and it has. Like that. And the flowers <laughs> are there. And the light is there. Yeah. And the space is there. Yeah. And it hasn't been crowded with stuff. Uh, and it, for us, it's great. I mm. mean, we, mm. we, um, mm. we, uh, we just love to go there <sighs> and be there quietly. And I think maybe for there. us and maybe for other people, but maybe certainly for us, it kind of tunes in with what happened to us all those many, many years ago, doesn't it? When um, after saying to God in that, in that, <laughs> to us, sort of highly significant moment of actually finally saying to God, feeling we were committing mm. to some, to an adventure, saying we'll go anywhere and do anything mm. and almost immediately afterwards you having a major stress illness and having to stop work uh, mm. problems with our church almost losing our house everything seemed devastating at the time mm. and out of it came a new path for you of writing and yeah. then a new path for both of us of speaking but we would not have known it well yeah and, 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 you know, it, I mean it wasn't you know, it isn't huge and visible like this church no and but, I wasn't um, comparing it but I just... we were probably standing <laughs> around um in the midst of what looked like devastation. devastation, thinking, what can possibly ever come out of this? Yeah. It yeah. did come out, but actually the cost was very high. Do you remember what you were talking to God at night at that time? Uh, I, you, you said every night you said to God... Um, uh, oh, well, I prayed for your healing. Praying for my I healing. Did. And what was it you thought God said well, to you? Well, I thought night? God said, uh, are you willing to pay the cost? And I had no idea what that meant. But it was all all walks with God when he's decided on them. There's going to be a cost, isn't there? There's going to be a cost. Did you say yes then? Uh, I think I did. Uh, mm, but course. you couldn't have known. No. And the cost meant. was also lots of rewards but but there was no doubt that mm. that bringing up children with you often away um us trying struggling to find what was right and what was proper if you like um it was was tricky <laughs> at times i think it's one way of putting it well, lots of it was it yeah. was very difficult yeah um, but there were also amazing rewards but it is true we don't really allow or preach cost very much i think i've real personally i've realized lately what, what a deficit that is um because yeah. well i think the fact is that some people react much better to knowing the cost than to believing it's it's all going to happen without you trying very hard i don't mean you can earn your your way into heaven or salvation or any of that stuff i mean that you 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 have to start to realize that you are what you're doing when you sign up for christian faith if you want to put it like that is you are saying i want to be part of the plan you have not i want you to give me everything i need yeah but i will be part of that and and i now want to understand what it is you've done for us it's it's a obviously not as simple as a, it, it can't be put terribly terribly simply but jesus I mean, there's a bit in the Gospel of um, Luke where he warns people that the, the pathway is narrow and it's awkward and it doesn't go down too well when you tell people about that. 
And he says, um, if you don't do that, what's going to happen? And I, I read it today. If you don't do that, you're going to end up faltering if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. And people will just laugh and say, look, mm -hmm. look. He said it was all going to be so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I think, I mean, I, I understand. I mean, you don't want to spoil the experience for somebody. Somebody no, is overwhelmed by the love of God. Mm -hmm. You don't want at that point to say, well, actually, no. uh, it can be really tough and you might sometimes feel he's not there and you might say, you don't want to fill it all in, but you just need to walk with people so that when, when things begin to uh, get tough, mm -hmm. It's not the opposite to what you said. Is that is that fair? It's I, it's something like that. I think you just it's the thing that we we've, we've learned and that has to be said again and again. The best thing to do is tell the truth. Yeah. If you do that, you can't go too far wrong because one of the questions you might ask of us is why are you still blithering on about the Christian faith after forty years or whatever it is? And the answer is it burns in us. It, huh. it's yeah it's not it's you you will discover what is real to you and what what motivates you and what keeps you going and all that mm. but i think mm. there is there is a sense in which we don't we, i remember i remember for instance a, a fellow in a church we used to be in i remember he used to say god answers all prayers and listens to all prayers and i it was fair enough you know he was a very great enthusiast but I remember one day he said, I've just been talking to a man and I prayed with him and the thing we prayed for happened. It's amazing. I mean, God answered the prayer. And I said, well, you've been saying that for the last three years you've told me that. He said, yeah, but it happened. Yeah. I mean, there is, there, is a, um, there is a danger that you're going to advertise the things that you hope will happen rather than what yeah. is happening to you. I, but, I, it, but I agree with hard. you. You can't, you can't. Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting for some people to discover. But I mean, there is no doubt faith. that Jesus, aware of what he was going to go through mm. uh, at Gethsemane, was was trying. It must have been very hard to get that across to people. How could they understand? But of course, when, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? When Jesus met Saul, mm. it was he I mean that was one of those interesting things because he didn't say now join my camp and everything will be much happier did he no it was much more complicated than that and I mean if you're talking about the the the, the suffering connected with faith um, I mean he actually said to Paul why are you, why are you kicking against what you really want because it looks as if Paul actually wanted to be like this bloke Stephen, mm. whose face shone as he was stoned. You know, mm. Paul mm. must have thought, "How do you become like that?" Mm. Mm. So what Jesus said to him, "Is why are you fighting me? Mm. Why why are you hurting me? Because he was persecuting the Christians. Why are you doing this to me? Mm. You know, it's me you want." Mm. Mm. And then this mm. strange verse where I think. Ananias is the man who comes to talk to Paul, isn't he? And it says, God says, I must show him how much he's going to suffer for me. Mm. Mm. And um, Saul, mm. who became Paul, I mean, what a flowering that was in the end. I mean, incredible, mm. incredible mm. job he did. But mm. the price, I mean, mm. he really went through it. But something in him perhaps it was the way he was made he was he was a goer and a getter and a well he was an uh, all-outer was, wasn't yeah, he <laughs> yeah. i think um i think that was one thing um but yeah i how are we connecting this really with this fire i think it is that for paul saul paul it was a before and after wasn't it for him i mean i know you said he wanted it but he didn't just calmly make the decision. Not in the slightest, no. I mean, he was thrown to the ground. He was um, blinded. He must at that moment have thought, I'm, I'm, I'm for it now, whatever this is, and whoever this is, yeah. I'm in big trouble. Yeah. Then he ends up in a cold hut somewhere, Yeah. and he's blind, he can't yeah. see. Yeah. And then, bewilderingly, someone comes, puts their hands on him and says, Brother Saul. <laughs> and, yeah. so, and from then... 
Uh, it seems. I mean, I know it says actually soon after that he wanted to go and preach. Yeah. He was filled with this. I don't know. With perhaps um, the, the profound desire to make up for the time that he. Yeah. He'd. Sp I don't know who. I'm not him. I don't ask him one day if I'm. But it to. is interesting, isn't it? That if you think back to the church, mm. as far as Paul was concerned. He was in a solid building, you know. It it was considered really strong, the Jewish mm. faith. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. being a rabbi, being a scholar, being very clever, mm. knowing it all, mm. being in charge of people who were persecuting these people who were going to destroy, as far as he was concerned, elements of the Jewish faith. So he had a strength there, as far as he was concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Then he sees somebody yeah. who's got nothing and who is dying for his faith. And he sees something else, and mm. and it. But he, it, so that in a way, you know, he had to lose the solidity. He had to decide at some point, sitting in the dark in those few days, three mm. days, I think we're told, that he wasn't going back, and maybe mm. he couldn't go back. That had been destroyed. Now mm. he'd met Jesus. There's no way. It, he could have the sl the solid walls of his faith. Yeah. It was going to be something new, and maybe, as you said, a, a flowering, uh, well, something it, quite amazing. He was really. quite lucky compared with some of us. Wasn't he? I mean, yeah, he was actually met by Jesus, and it was a very dramatic encounter. Yeah. So yeah, he did have I don't a bit know. of a task. So I mean, without him, if he hadn't gone off to Europe and gone off, know, we yeah. we wouldn't. Well, who knows yeah, what would have happened? Yeah. But he went through immense pain and suffering and hardship and yeah. just seemed to I mean I would say reading it sometimes he thrived on it almost because he said if this makes a difference yeah. I don't care yeah. I'm going to anyway yeah. yeah so big cost yeah enormous flowering <laughs> uh, more than most of us are ever going to but you see uh, you know what was it it said about Brandon the most beautiful the most this that mm. and the other it must have looked invincible yeah. and and we're just coming up to Palm Sunday and mm. Jesus knew what he was going towards the disciples were worried but Jesus knew but Palm Sunday was a triumph and and the disciples walking with him must have thought it's got to be all right look at all these people look at all these people who are really excited about yeah, everything absolutely. to do with it yeah and and whether they actually said hosanna in the highest the main thing is they were whooping and shouting and crowding and longing to be there and saying this is it this is look here mm. he is they must have been bewildered by him coming in on a donkey but nonetheless <laughs> you know it was it was it was the epitome of everything exciting and good mm, it was it was it, I, i'd love to have been there yeah. Plus, we better watch it on video when we get to when we get um, to heaven. You never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it must look so. It was absolutely on top of the world, and it went wrong. What and, could and just possibly go wrong? Exactly. Well, I mean, obviously, Jesus did know that he was going to burn in the sense mm. that he, that it was going to crash. Mm. He knew that people were going to be devastated. Mm. He knew that they were not going to understand. How could it be that something so important? Mm. could just wasn't much comfort though was it my grief is so great that it no. crushes me is what no. he said yeah no. yeah no. once you once you've left behind the devastation and the change begins you're probably not going to be able to turn back very easily um, no. because I... you were, you were seeing something so new and yeah um, it, even if it isn't inviting it's the truth I know we might have mentioned this man before, but we met a guy in Australia, didn't we, called Jeff Bullock? Yeah, that's right. And he mm. had been one of these sort of edifices of the church, if mm. you like, because he was one of the great singer-songwriters of Hillsong. And I think we've probably talked about this before, but he went to Holland, he met a lot of young people who were passionate mm. about Jesus, but living in, in quite a different way. I mean, a lot of them were smoking and they were drinking, all of which yeah. would not have happened in his church. And he came back, he was full of it, and, and it was devastatingly difficult mm. for this very strong 
thing that was Hillsong at the time. And he lost everything. And he lost he? everything. He well, was, actually, yeah, he lost everything then. He lost everything at that point. Yeah. And one of the songs that he sang, that he wrote after mm. that, is extraordinary. I mean, do you want to read it, Adrian? Yeah, it's in one sense very simple, but for him and in his life it wasn't. This is the words, I will never be the same again. I can never return. I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I'll run the race. And I will never be the same again. Fall like fire, soak like rain, flow like mighty waters again and again. Sweep away the darkness, burn away the chaff, and let a flame burn to glorify your name. There are higher heights, there are deeper seas. Whatever you need to do, Lord, do it in me. The glory of God fills my life, and I will never be the same again. And I think, you know, fall like fire, sweep away the darkness, burn away mm. the chaff. So sometimes when everything in you has been destroyed, maybe, or feels as though it has, or or something that was important to you, or someone that you've relied on, someone who's been the epitome of everything good and strong, mm. and, and maybe they die, maybe they go away, or maybe something mm. happens to them, or, uh, or maybe it's within you, but it feels like devastation. Mm. If ever you get a chance to go to St. Brandon's Church and look at that window, yeah. it is a go symbol of glorious beauty that has come mm. out of something. You might meet us there. Quite devastating. We go there a couple and of times And our dog and your power chair. Yeah, my power chair. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, have a good um, Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And Easter is coming. And as we all know, Jesus... Uh, was wrapped in silver paper and was made of chocolate. Adrian, that's enough. We'll talk to you <laughs> next week. Bye. Bye-bye.